So I know one thing about myself. If I start thinking that I've gotten over something, or when I start thinking like, oh yeah, I've got this, this is now totally fine, I know that I'm in trouble because I'm simplifying something in a way that is going to bite me in the ass. And I usually do this about, you know, like a wound or something that's been a really big pain point in my life. But I also know that in my experience, at least up until this point in my life, I've not gotten rid of any of my wounds or any of my scars or any of the things that have been really challenging for me. I just have become a little bit more able to be in a more mature relationship with them. Meaning I don't try to think that I'm above them when I'm in my right mind. But when I start to think that I'm above things, when I start to think that I got this, like this is not an issue anymore. Hopefully then the other part of me, the smarter part of me, the wiser part of me, my higher self, you might say, is like, "Mm, really? You think so? And then I might be able to like have a pause and be like, oh, I think something's going on. Welcome to the Astrology of the Week Ahead podcast. I'm your host, Chani Nicholas, and this week I think is going to bring us a lesson or two about those tricky, tricky wounds that we might want to rush through and not have to deal with. We have a full moon on the table. We have a full moon coming at the end of the week, and it's big and it's fiery and it's going to make a statement and there's just a lot going on with it. So that is going to happen on Friday the 29th. But before we get there, I just want to kind of note like that is the big moment. But before we get there, Monday actually gives us a big boost. Mercury now direct, no longer retrograde, now functioning for the moment in a really positive way. Mercury on Monday makes a trine to Jupiter. What that means is that there is some really good news that is sure to come. Hopefully our way, it does feel like a kind of positive message day, but it's really practical. It's not just like some, you know, hot air that's trying to like blow something up. It doesn't feel like hype. Mercury is in Virgo. It's very detail oriented. It really wants to work. It wants to be effective and efficient. And it's making a trine to Jupiter that's in Taurus. And Jupiter in Taurus loves bounty, loves slow growth, loves to be like, let's calm this all down and think about the ways in which we could unfurl in a luxurious type of way. So this is practical advice. Monday brings us some practical wisdom, some practical planning, and some practical advice that I think is going to be exceptionally helpful. So think about, listen for, tune into the wisdom that comes your way that maybe isn't like shiny and happy and like full of hype, but it's full of of something that works and it's full of advice that is going to help us build towards something slowly but effectively and in a really intelligent way. That's Monday. And then on Friday the 29th we have the full moon in Aries. And look, this is not an eclipse. The next moon will be a new moon in Libra mid-October, and it will be an eclipse. However, this full moon feels eclipsy to me, not just because it feels that way, because it looks that way. And I say that because Mars, the ruler of this full moon, is sitting near the south node, a place where eclipses happen, the place where the next eclipse will happen, or the first upcoming eclipse will happen. And Chiron is sitting next to the North Node, the other place where eclipses happen. So besides the astrology of it all, 
eclipsy things, or when I say this full moon feels eclipsy in nature, means that it it seems like, looks like, appears to be a moment that's quite pivotal and activated because there's stuff hanging around the nodes. Now, Mars hanging around the south node is really important because Mars is in charge of this full moon and how it goes. And Mars has a hard time in Libra because it's not able to be forthright and direct. And Mars near the south node is some kind of a release or letting go. So the question is, what is this full moon helping us to release or let go? And there's a lot to be said about our ideas and the reality of justice and what justice looks like in this moment, in this context, given all the parameters. And I think we like to, or I think our human brains wish that Justice was like a cut and dry kind of scenario. This is right and this is wrong. And that's not the world we live in. There's a lot of nuance and there's a lot of gray area. And there's a lot of different ways in which the scales can be tipped one way and the other. And there's not a one size fits all in terms of what is just and what is fair and what is going to create a situation where equity is available or can happen. So I think that we're going to have a lot of conversations about what is right and what is just and what is fair given this full moon and what it's reflecting. And look, I'm recording this at the beginning of August, so I have no idea what's going on in the future. I don't know what the end of September is going to bring. But it does feel like these conversations, it does feel like this emphasis is really big around the end of this week, around the end of September. Not only because of that, but there's an asteroid goddess named Pallas Athene, and she's the warrior goddess. She is, you know, the fighting spirit. That asteroid's also in Libra, and it's sitting right next to the sun during this full moon. And because this fighter you know, this kind of warrior goddess energy is in Libra, the sign of justice and peace and harmony and equity and balance, and Mars, the planet of war and fighting and aggression and courage and valor, is also in Libra. It does seem like there's a desire to reach a kind of peaceful agreement, but there's a fight that's involved. And that's contradictory. So it does feel like there's a lot of contrary kind of energy with this full moon. And a full moon in Aries loves a loves a controversy, <laughs> loves to spice things up, loves to be like, yeah, let's talk about what's wrong. Let's go for something uh, in a big, bold way that probably is going to get some negative feedback and some reaction. So these are the two things that are happening during the full moon. And then there's a third thing. Venus, the planet that rules Libra, Venus, the planet of cohesion and harmony and love and relationships and balance and all those things I just talked about, is in its third and final square to Uranus. And Uranus just loves to throw a wrench in the works and upset the apple cart and throw things for a loop and be like, surprise, chaos. Hey, how's it going? So This is also happening on the full moon. So it feels like a really loud moment. It feels like we are talking about why things get disrupted, what fairness is, what equity could mean, what justice might look like, why the system is out of date, how to like, you know, mess with tradition in a way that's going to hopefully get us closer to some kind of like liberation and freedom what to fight for, what justice looks like in this moment. And then just a full moon in Aries is, again, going to be bold. It's going to be in our face. It's going to be dramatic. It's going to get attention. It's going to fan the flames. It doesn't care if it gets too hot. It actually likes it on the extra heated side. So get your fans out, uh, but careful not to fan a flame that you don't want to. So that's the full moon. And again, we have to see like, 
what's happening on a collective level, I just feel like there's going to be a lot to talk about. There's going to be a lot of conversations about fairness, justice, what we fight for, what we don't. On a personal level, I do think, and I talked a lot about this in your personal readings for the week, but I do feel like there's something to be put down in order to rebalance the scales in our own life. Like, what is it that we have to relinquish? What do we have to offer up? What do we need to, you might say sacrifice, I'm not sure if that's the right word, but what do we need to, you know, when you like, you go towards, you make an approach towards an altar of some kind, you, you give it an offering, maybe you give it the best food on your plate, right? Like maybe you give the only honey you've got to the goddess. Maybe you, you give something over that feels like this is important to me, or you, you give away some money or some thing that is like, you know, valuable, but you, you're doing the offering to rebalance yourself. And that kind of signature feels like it's rippling through this week and next week and maybe even the week after because we're having all this activity in Libra right now. And the reason why I started talking about wounds and woundedness and feeling like, you know, when I feel like I'm above my own stuff, I know I'm in trouble, uh, is because Chiron and the North Node are getting closer and closer together. And Chiron is the wounded healer not because Chiron's wounds taught it how to be a healer. In the mythology, Chiron is already an exceptional healer and teacher, and everybody goes to Chiron, the centaur, half person, half horse, to learn about healing, to learn about the plants and the forest, to learn about remedies. And then Chiron gets wounded because he joins a fight, he's in the wrong place at the wrong time, or maybe the right place at the right time. And that wound is something he can never heal. So it is about the ever-bleeding wound that teaches us. And what Chiron ends up doing is, because he can't heal himself and he's in agony, he actually petitions the gods to become mortal so that he can die eventually and not have to live with the pain. So there's something about remembering our humanity in the face of our own woundedness Again, not feeling like we are above those things that have caused us suffering. And not to like be myopic about the suffering or to be like, oh, I'll never heal from this. So what's the point? No, but it's about being human enough to remember like I'm vulnerable to life. I'm vulnerable in relationships. I am vulnerable to everything that happens. And I'm also a part of the whole ecosystem and therefore people are also vulnerable to me. And so I hurt and I can hurt. It's both things. I am both sides. And remembering that I think helps us to remember our humanity. And also, again, that we're just not above pain. We're not above the suffering of life. And when we can really, I think, embrace that, we get to be fully present to all of the ups and downs and the textures and the quality of life. And we're not trying to like furiously escape it. I think with our youth fame obsessed culture, we're always trying to get out of the things that are actually going to mature us and make us gorgeously flawed human beings. And this full moon reminds us to stay close to that, not try to get out of it. And I keep saying like, you know, having the hubris to think that we're above our pain because this full moon's in Aries. Chiron's in Aries. Aries is like, I'll be fine. Don't worry about it. (laughs) And like, you know, flies through space and time and then like, is like, oh my God, why do I hurt? Or why do I keep ending up in this thing? Because for Aries, it's so easy to keep going, going, going and feeling like this heroic kind of archetype takes over and... You know, heroes got to also go to the temple and heal. Heroes also, heroines also have to recoup. It's, it's not always some big triumph. So there's a lot of courage that comes with this full moon. And then there's also the other side where it's like, what's the balance point to that? What do I have to offer up to the altar of my own peace? Right? If you think of like approaching 
the altar of your life and saying, yeah, I love to win and I love, you know, to be courageous and I love to go off and do the things that feel like, you know, some great feat. But I also know that I've got to come back and find some equilibrium and find some peace and balance in my life. And maybe in this moment, there's something that's calling you towards that. Like, what do I have to be courageous enough to give up and to offer up so that there might be a little bit more peace or equity or justice or harmony in my life? Maybe a little bit of all of that. After the full moon... There's also something really cute that happens on Saturday. Mercury, again, in Virgo, really good right now. I'm saying right now because it's not going to be next week. But right now, it's going to make a trine to Uranus on Saturday, which is really innovative and sparks some great ideas and makes for some fascinating conversations. Again, it's practical wisdom. It is practical innovation. It is the tools we need to be able to make those like systems updates. So key in, clue in, listen up for those sentiments and conversations. And I will say up next on October 2nd, next week, Mercury makes an opposition to Neptune. And so it's going to be messy at the beginning of next week. So enjoy this last little moment of clarity on Saturday because uh, next week is going to start off on a soupy kind of wishy-washy foot. And I want us to be prepared for that. We'll talk about that next week. Thank you all so much for leaving us reviews in the app store. And I wanted to leave you with this one called Amazing and Heartfelt. I have loved the Chani app for over a year and must say, Chani has a way with words and her voice is lovely. She gets to the point with delightful insights. I give Chani a five-star rating. P.S. I love the beautiful meditations and quirky, sweet animals that are all included. So I will see you back here for more. Until then, wishing many full moon blessings, many full moon healing moments, many full moon epiphanies about how to come back into some kind of balance in our lives and maybe even our world. Who knows? One can dream. A girl can hope. Thanks so much for joining. Bye for now.